Hello dear students, in this lecture we will discuss Creighton and McClintock's experiment in maize which was a proof of crossing over and this experiment is also called cytological proof of crossing over. This experiment proves that crossing over occurs at four stranded stage of chromosomes. So we have already discussed what is linkage uh, in first two lectures of this series. Please refer to that. Linkage is tendency of two or more genes to be inherited together and the genes do not follow the law of independent assortment. Links, uh, link genes uh, do not separate or exchange genetic material and the term linkage was given by Morgan. So we have discussed this uh, linkage and associated numericals in lot of detail in first two lectures of linkage and chromosome series. Please see th those videos. Now in this lecture we are focusing on crossing over. So crossing over is exchange of genetic material between non-sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes. So this is the definition of crossing over and it takes place during diplotene stage of meiosis. The term crossing over was given by Morgan. Now, uh, that crossing over we have just discussed that it is exchange of D and gene segments between non-sister chromatids of homologous chromosome and now we know that crossing over occurs at four stranded stage of uh, chromosomes. But earlier it was not known and so uh, how it was proved. So there are experiments were done to prove it and there are two kinds of experiments in which gives evidences. So first is indirect evidence. This was given by Beadle and Totem by taking neurospora as genetic material and they did tetrad analysis in neurospora to prove that uh, uh, crossing over occurs at four stranded stage of chromosomes but this is not in your course so we are not doing this uh, in this lecture then there are two direct evidences to prove this uh, why this is called direct evidence because the uh, products of crossing over can be observed under microscope so we can directly observe the chromosomes under microscope and uh, in indirect evidence the chromosomes are not observed but the expression their expression in the form of color of spores in ascus of neurospora is observed. That is why that evidence is called indirect and this is direct evidence. Now in direct evidence, two experiments were done. First was Critton and McClintock experiment on maize and second was Stern's experiment on Drosophila. But Stern's experiment on Drosophila is not in your syllabus so we are not going to discuss. Now let us discuss Critton and McClintock's experiment in maize. In detail. Let us detail Creighton and McClintock's experiment in detail now which is the proof which is also an experiment to prove that crossing over occurs at four stranded stage or tetravalent stage of chromosomes. So two American botanists Creighton, Harriet Creighton and Barbara McClintock performed an experiment in maize they use two strains of maize that have distinctive chromosomes. So the ninth chromosome of one strain had a knob at one end and another cell marker at the other end which is indicated by dashed portion in diagram. So here uh, you can see that uh, yeah, this is your in first strain you can see a marker the, which is a marker chromosome you can see that there is a dash at one end here black dash uh, no black knob portion and you can see a dashed portion at the other end so this was these are two markers on the first strain in second strain of maize this chromosome did not have the knob and the dashed portion so you can see this is the second strain without the knob and without the dashed portion they crossed these two strains and produced a hybrid so here you can see that uh, this is they are showing the crossing the first strain and the second strain when it was crossed it produced a hybrid so 
in in the hybrid you can see that this is a heterozygous hybrid where in one chromosome it had knob in second it had no no knob the other end had dashed portion on, on the end and the other uh, chromosome does not have the dashed portion so in addition to these morphological uh, marker features the chromosomes had two pairs of heterozygous alleles uh, capital c for colored kernel which is a dominant allele and small c or for colorless kernel which is a recessive allele capital wx for starchy kernel which is dominant allele and small wx for waxy kernel which is recessive allele. so here you can see that in hybrid it is heterozygous for capital c and small c and capital wx and small wx so when this hybrid plant now heterozygous for the two genes was crossed with one carrying noblex chromosome with small c and wx in homozygous state so this is technically a test cross where we are hybridizing the f1 hybrid uh, uh, where we are crossing the f1 hybrid with the homozygous recessive parent the test cross progeny was then examined genetically and cytologically so the second step is your test cross and these are the products after uh, crossing over now since this c was very close to knob you can see in the diagram uh, little or no crossing over took place we have discussed that during linkage when the genes are located very close there is no crossing over uh, since C was very close to knob, little or no crossing over took place in this region. When a crossing over occurs between these two genes, all the colored starchy plants should have knob chromosomes. So now let us just uh, say that crossing over is occurring between second chromatid and third chromatid of this uh, here in F1 hybrid. So the, what are the products after crossing over? So the first, because the first chromatid and the fourth chromatid has not undergone crossing over, so they are non-crossovers, and the second and third they will be recombinants. So uh, these are the products which are obtained after this crossover event. With like we have um, uh, no uh, two non-crossover products and two crossover products showing recombinants. So let us discuss this in detail. Let us just discuss. In detail now what we have just discussed uh, in the previous slide so uh, let us we have just discussed that these are the two parents where one of the parent has knob at one end of the chromosome and dashed portion on the other end of the chromosome and the other chromosome is knobless and without any dashed portion and Similarly, they have alleles, the small wx and small c in one parent and capital wx and small c in the other parent. So when these two parents cross, the hybrid is heterozygous for all the four genes or markers. So you can see that in hybrid, you have knob at one in knob in one chromosome without knob in second chromosome. <clears throat> dashed portion in one chromosome without dash in second similarly for alleles capital c in one small c in other small wx in one and capital wx in other so when this f1 hybrid it is crossed with a homozygous recessive parent it is a te technically a test cross the this is now in hybrid say crossing over occurs between second and third chromatid so uh, in hybrid when meiosis takes place and say crossing over occurs between second and third chromatid so what are the gametes four kind of gametes which are formed because the first and fourth chromatid first and fourth chromatid has no crossing over so they will be non crossover and second and third they are have undergone crossing over so they will be your co or crossover products so four kinds of gametes are formed in F1 hybrid. When these four kinds of gametes crosses with the gametes formed by the homozygous recessive parent, which is uh, only of one kind, these are the four kind of progeny which are formed. Your first 
and second will be non crossover uh, which will be uh, which will be uh, your and the second third and fourth will be crossover progeny so these are the four kinds of products which are formed now same we have we can see here it is represented here in this diagram so uh, let us just summarize what we have discussed so far so you can see here side by side two pictures so in two pictures you can see what we have discussed and i have just uh, summarized everything in the form of points so creighton and mcclintock performed experiment in maize they used two strains of ma maize that ha have distinctive chromosome this we have just discussed now in uh, the ninth chromosome of one strain had knob at one end and dashed portion at the other end with alleles for waxy endosperm and colored uh, kernel. So, we, you can see in the diagram both the parents. Second point says, in second strain of maize, this chromosome did not have knob and dashed portion and alleles for starchy endosperm and colorless kernel. So, you can see in the diagram. Third point says, they crossed these two strains and produced a hybrid. So you can see here in F1 hybrid that F1 hybrid is heterozygous in the diagram. Fourth, you can see that the hybrid plant was heterozygous for both the alleles as well as knob and dash portion. So you can see here in F1 hybrid. Now fifth point, uh, the hybrid was test crossed and progenies were then examined genetically and cytologically. Now in the diagram you just try to understand uh, that when the test cross is done the after the test cross there are three cases which we assume uh, so what are the three cases which we assume say in case one we assume that crossing over has taken place at tetravalent stage so we have made the diagram and we have discussed in class so you will understand it now in the second case is we assume that there is no crossover so you can see the diagram what happens when no crossing over. and third case is that say crossing over happens at two stra uh, stranded stage of meiosis so in case one we can see what happens if we take case one say we uh, crossing over uh, we assume that crossing over is at tetravalent stage so you see what are the four kinds of gametes we have discussed just now that two will be parental and two will be crossover in case two when no crossing over gamete uh, crossover happens only the parental types will be observed and say we assume that crossing over happens at two stranded stage so we will get only ruby combinants and no parental types but when it was observed under microscope recombinants as well as the parental types were observed and that was possible only in case one when we assume that crossing over occurs at tetravalent stage that is why we will rule out the second and third case and we will uh, now confirm that uh, that crossing over occurs at fourth uh, standard stage of chromosome so sixth point is very important the recombinants were observed under microscopes and they were possible only when crossing over takes place at tetravalent stage of meiosis and also parental combinations were observed which was also possible only when crossing over occurs at four standard stage of chromosomes so this is a direct pro proof of crossing over uh, that crossing over takes place at four standard stage of chromosomes this point is very important that four type of combinations will be observed only So this is the picture from Pierce and you can read uh, this experiment from Pierce also. It is nicely given in Pierce also. So thank you students. I hope you have understood the topic. Please practice by making diagrams and reading books. And let us meet ne next lecture.